Hello, my name is Maurice Osborne. I will be your host for this documentary that exposes hidden messages from extraterrestrial beings that have been discovered in crop circle formations. Now, it's not my intent here to try to convince you that extraterrestrial beings exist or the crop circles are not man-made. There's an abundance of information from several credible sources that support these conclusions. And credit is given to these daunting individuals at the end of this presentation. Now, although I'll be describing the crop circle phenomenon, the main emphasis here will be to reveal the hidden messages in crop formations and to provide explanations as to what they may mean. The methods used for deciphering these messages are fully explained and you are encouraged to verify this information for yourself. Let me show you what will be presented. This will be a description of the crop circle phenomenon. Then the geometric designs of crop circles will be presented. Next, some of the more fascinating mathematical aspects of the formations will be described. This is followed by advanced scientific technologies that have been revealed within the pictograms. Then an amazing face depicted within a crop circle formation will be presented. Another formation will then be shown to be a response to a message that we humans sent out into space. And finally, another facial formation is presented that has a very special message for mankind. The crop circle phenomenon began with the discovery of single circle patterns that mysteriously appeared within cultivated crop fields all over the world. They became known as crop circles. The plants inside the circular patterns were found to be lying horizontally near the ground instead of standing vertically as with other normally growing plants. These lying plants created a contrast to the even shades and colors of the standing plants. There is evidence to suggest that these circles have been found all over the world for hundreds and perhaps even thousands of years. They have also been found in grassy fields, heather, fields of wildflowers, and reed beds. Although this is a worldwide phenomenon, over 90% of the formations have been found in southern England. It has been estimated that there have been over 9,000 crop circle formations discovered all over the world just since the early 1980s. In the summer of 1975, multiple crop circles in close proximity with one another started appearing. This is an example of six circles located close to one another. There was also a group of three circles that shared a common axis. In 1989, a cross pattern was discovered with five small circles around a large circle. But it was in 1990 when straight lines began to appear which transformed the patterns from simple circles into complex pictograms. This beautiful formation was discovered on August 13th of 2000 at Woodboro Hill in Wiltshire County, England. And this spectacular formation of squares depicted in three-dimensional perspective appeared on June 18, 2000 at Windmill Hill, also in Wiltshire County. On July 22nd of 2002, this beautiful pattern was discovered at South Field near Alton Priors in Wiltshire County. But the most breathtaking crop formation of 2002 was discovered on July 4th at Normantown near the ancient sacred site of Stonehenge in Wiltshire County. It is a magnificent rendering of six ribbons furling out from a central circle. Now those are just some of the more interesting crop formations that have been discovered in recent years. There are many, many more. But these represent a level of sophistication that clearly demonstrates a high degree of intelligence by whoever made them. However, even more interesting than the patterns themselves are the way in which they are created and there are many mysteries involved in how crop circles are created, which usually occurs at night and in damp weather, but not always. 
There is corroborating testimony from several credible witnesses that report seeing strange lights in the sky above where crop formations are formed. And the vast size of these formations, some of which cover an entire square acre, would require several people working in the dark for many hours in order to try to create them. And researchers have been unable to find any tracks or any signs of human presence in the area where crop formations are formed. The stalk of the affected plants inside a crop circle is gently bent over near ground level. There is no crushing, bruising, cutting, breaking, burning, or damage to the crops in any way. In fact, the plants remain in perfect condition and they continue to grow parallel to the ground, coming to full maturity and ripening. The variations in the lay of the crops are as numerous as the variations of the crop circle designs themselves. In many crop formations, the stalks give a clear indication of how and where the energy flowed in making the patterns. Some layers of crops appear to be intertwined and almost braided. Others are laid down in straight lines, but in alternate directions. Michigan biophysicist Dr. W. C. Levengood has examined plants from inside and outside of crop formations in the United States, Canada, England, and Australia. He has found a consistent combination of changes in affected plants, which include enlargement of plant cell pits, reoriented, swollen, and exploded growth nodes, evidence of rapid heating, changes in seed growth, and an increase in metabolic cell respiration. These are samples of unaffected stems taken from plants that were well outside of a crop formation. They are relatively straight. These are samples of plants taken from inside of a crop circle. Dr. Levengood has found that the top growth nodes are bent at an average of 39 degrees from the vertical. He believes that this was caused by rapid heating and expansion, followed by a collapse of the thin cell tissue, which then produced the angled reorientation. These are samples of lower stem growth nodes of affected plants. The arrows are pointing at expulsion cavities. These lower nodes have tissue that is tougher and more mature, which can sustain more pressure and do not collapse as easily as the upper nodes when exposed to rapid heating. Instead, Dr. Levengood concludes that the cell water heats up and bursts out of the lower nodes, causing expulsion cavities. Although subjected to rapid heating, the plants were not dehydrated. Their seeds germinate faster and have a 45% increased growth rate as demonstrated here, with plants from inside, at the edge, and outside of a crop circle. Dr. Levengood has stated that whatever is doing these formations is affecting the fundamental biophysics and biochemistry of the plants. He hypothesizes that crop circles are created with a spinning plasma and microwave energy. Although the crop formations appear to have very beautiful designs, they also represent a staggering amount of scientific and mathematical knowledge. And much of the information contained within the pictograms is subtle, with hidden complexities of advanced geometry. In addition, many of the formations depict advanced technologies that can be of great benefit to mankind. Let's have a look at some of these incredible formations and examine what they could represent. This is a depiction of three simple crop circles that were found to appear in a formation near each other. It represents only one example of the hidden complexity in their design. It was discovered that the circles were arranged in such a way that a straight line could be drawn between them and have it touch all three circles here, here, and here. In addition, another straight line could be drawn so that it could also touch all three circles. Then a third line was found to be able to touch the circles, and this means that the circles were positioned in proportion to their size. 
This is a depiction of a crop circle formation that was discovered in 1998 in a wheat field near the city of Old Beerland in Holland. It is by no means a collection of arbitrarily positioned circles and rings. It turns out that this pictogram was remarkably arranged so that a total of six straight lines could be drawn in such a way that they exactly touch three different circle elements. If any of the circles were of any other size or position differently, this would not have been possible. Uh, this is an example of a crop formation with the width of the ring pattern being the exact size where a square could be drawn with its corners touching the outside part of the ring and have the inside portion touching the sides. This is an example of a crop formation where the inside circle just happens to be the exact size where an equilateral triangle could be drawn with its corners touching the outside ring and still have the inside circle touching the sides. And this is an example of how the inside circle just happens to be the right size where it would touch the sides of a square if its corners were touching the outside circle. Multiple geometric shapes can be used in crop circle formations, as in this example, where the width of the ring is determined by the use of a square and a triangle is used to establish the size of the inside circle. This is a depiction of a crop formation that was discovered near the village of Melek, Holland in the summer of 1997. It consists of a small circle in the middle of three concentric rings. The ring widths and spaces between the rings are all slightly different. The reason for this is because of a complex set of geometric shapes that were used in its design. The center circle is able to fit within an equilateral triangle with its corners touching the inner ring. This ring fits inside of a square with its corners touching the next ring. These rings then can make it possible for a pentagram or five-pointed star to be used in order to determine the rest of the formation. This is the same crop formation with different geometric shapes that further define its construction. Notice how a pentagon is used to specify the outer diameter in relation to the size of the center circle. Also notice how the inside portion of the second ring is used to create two triangles that face in opposite directions in order to form a hexagram or six-pointed star. When straight lines are drawn between the points of the star, it forms a hexagon shape. And finally, the outside portion of the third ring was found to precisely touch the sides of the hexagon. Clearly, a great deal of thought went into the design of these formations. We will now examine some of the pictograms that exhibit advanced mathematical concepts. This beautiful snowflake design appeared on July 23, 1997, near Silbury Hill. It was known as the Koch snowflake after mathematician Hamlet von Koch, who developed the concept of fractals. An even more complex snowflake pattern was found below Milk Hill in Wiltshire County on August 18th of 1997. It was known as the Standing Koch Snowflake because of the standing crop in the center that created yet another snowflake-like pattern. On July 8th of 1996, this formation appeared just across the road from the ancient site known as Stonehenge. It consists of 149 circles that cover an entire square acre of a wheat field. This design matches a mathematically produced image known as a Julia set that was invented by Gaston Julia from a study of fractals. And on July 30th of the same year, a formation with 194 circles covering a thousand feet in diameter was found at Windmill Hill in Wiltshire County. 
it consists of three strands of the Julia set. Then in August of 2000, this formation with six strands of the Julia set was found at Mill Hill near Alton Barnes in Wiltshire County. And on August 12th of 1991, this incredible glyph was discovered near Ickleton in Cambridgeshire, England. It appears to represent a fractal mathematical cipher known as a Mandelbrot set. It is the most complex object in the universe and defines an eerie repeating mathematical order beneath the surface of chaos. In late June of 1995 at Longwood Warren in Hampshire County, this formation appeared which depicts our solar system inside the asteroid belt with Earth missing. Earth's orbit is depicted but no planet. It has been determined that this configuration in our solar system will not occur until April 16th of 2004. In 1996, this pictogram was discovered in East Field of Wiltshire County. It is 648 feet long and contains 89 circles forming twin strands that wind around a central backbone of 12 large circles in a line. It represents the double helix of DNA, the building blocks of life. We will now concentrate on pictograms that represent advanced technology. This formation appeared on June 23, 1999 at West Overton in Wilshire County. It is a representation of a water molecule. And this beautiful pattern is a formation that was discovered on July 22nd of 2000 at Avabury Truslow in Wiltshire County. It appears to be a depiction of the flux lines of a magnetic field. Now you might be wondering what water molecules and magnetic fields have got to do with advanced technology. Well, the following series of crop formations refer to a new form of free energy that uses microwaves to break apart water molecules. This formation depicts a magnetron tube inside of a magnet. It is this type of vacuum tube that is used inside microwave ovens to cook your food. This pictogram is another rendition of a magnetron tube. When a surge of electricity is introduced at the center, the electrons radiate outwards but bounce back against a reflector grid due to the magnetic field surrounding it. This reflected energy is what causes microwaves that are allowed to escape through a narrow gap in the reflector. Please note that there are two small dots located near this depiction. They represent the oxygen and hydrogen atoms of water. These two small dots, one larger than the other, have been found alongside of many other formations like this one that also shows microwave energy emanating from a central core of a magnetron tube. Those two dots which represent the atoms of water are also depicted with this formation. Water is very unreceptive to physical or infrared heat, but at a very specific frequency of 27 gigahertz of microwave energy, the oxygen and hydrogen atoms of water separate easily. The ovals here within a field of microwave energy represents water molecules that are being split apart as with this partial piece. The dots here represent the separated oxygen and hydrogen atoms. However, once separated, the atoms recombine again naturally to reform back into water again, but hydrogen is extremely combustible when mixed with oxygen. This formation shows the effect of water burning as atoms recombine together again. This formation also shows the burning of water inside the vacuum of a magnetron. However, 
It also has large circles around it. These circles represent an excess of electrons that are generated when you burn water in this manner. When the process of breaking apart water molecules and allowing them to recombine again is repeated, you have an endless supply of electricity as well as combustible energy that can be used to power turbine engines. This complex pictogram tells the whole story. You begin with a negative electrical charge that is fed into a magnetron which splits water molecules. Then you have the oxygen and hydrogen atoms recombining back into water. This produces an excess of electrons that are fed back into the magnetron which bounces the energy off of magnetic reflectors in order to produce more microwaves so that this process can be repeated. But wait, there's more. When the excess high amperage from the magnetron passes over a cup-shaped magnet with uneven magnetic lines of flux in a vacuum, temporary particles are momentarily created as represented here. This rendition is telling us that the temporary particles are magnetic. The outside ring of notched semicircles represent magnets. The round semicircles represent temporary particles. These particles are rendered as half-field circles to represent the temporary existing mass. The particles are depicted as being larger the closer they are to the smaller magnets and rendered as smaller the nearer they are to the greater magnetic fields. This means that these particles are magnetic and are repelled by a magnetic field. The central donut shape indicates the high amperage DC electricity that flows through a vacuum which is represented by the white circle. And why bother to create such a particle? Well, by magnetically repelling the temporary particles downwards, this causes the repelling magnet and anything else that's attached to it to be propelled upwards, thus causing flight. The H2O magnetron is only one of many highly advanced technologies that have been rendered in crop formations. However, this one discovery could have the greatest impact on human society. This formation looks rather complicated, but it's not. At the center, you have a magnetron that splits apart water molecules and allows the water to reform, causing a release of free electrons. This outer ring represents a vacuum. These notch semicircles represent cup-shaped magnets. The white semicircles indicates the resulting magnetic field. As stated before, when high ampere current is passed over a magnet in a vacuum, temporary particles are produced. However, instead of having a single stream of particles being repelled from the center of this magnet, you have more cup-shaped magnets located around the first magnet which creates additional magnetic fields that cause multiple streams of particles. When you position many more smaller magnets around the previous ones, you are able to create a whole field of temporary particles which are depicted here as degenerating in size. This process also occurs on the other side of the magnetron in order to double the particle field size and to counteract the repelling magnetic forces involved. A week could go on for hours discussing all of the incredibly advanced technologies that the crop circle makers have decided to share with all of us, but I would like to turn our attention now to a couple of formations that shocked the world in 2001. They were discovered in a wheat field next to a radio telescope at Trebolton near Werewell in Hampshire County, England. First, this was discovered on August 14th of 2001. 
It was a crop circle formation that measured about 100 feet wide and 120 feet long. It was composed of about 200 circles of varying sizes that appeared to have formed a rendering of a face. When this pictogram is blurred so that the features are blended together, a clear image of a face appears. Some obvious questions come to mind. Does this depict the face of humanity? Is this the face of an alien species? Whose face is it, and what does it mean for mankind? Not only does this glyph represent a major advancement in the complexity and sophistication than any formation discovered before it, but the very location of this pictogram is also very interesting. There is an ancient global grid connection that mathematically links the location of this face to the Sidonia region on Mars and to the facial formation that has been discovered there. According to Zachariah Sitchin, an eminent scholar and author who has translated ancient Sumerian texts, the deposed king of another planet known as Nibiru, who was the first to set foot on Earth, died on Mars. As a monument to him, his face was carved out of a mountain there. I believe that this face on Mars and the face in this formation are of Alalu, the past king of the planet Nibiru and discoverer of the planet Earth long before the existence of humanity. Just five days after the discovery of the facial formation in this field across from the giant telescope at Trebolton, this formation appeared on August 19th of 2001. It is 75 feet wide and 120 feet long. A distinguished researcher by the name of Richard C. Hoagland quickly realized that this formation looked very similar to this message that was sent out into space back in November of 1974. Dr. Carl Sagan and Sir Francis Drake created this message as part of the project for the search of extraterrestrial intelligence. It was transmitted with two trillion watts of radiated energy from the Arecibo Radio Telescope in Puerto Rico. The message was sent in a very narrow beam towards a galactic cluster known as M13, which is 65 million light years away. It was a pictogram arranged in a matrix of 23 pixels by 73 pixels. This is the official explanation of that message. It was intended to describe our numbering system the building blocks and formulas for DNA, a double helix symbol of DNA, a figure of a human being, our solar system, and a diagram of the radio telescope that sent the message. In order to fully understand the message, it is necessary to examine how numbers were represented. This is the pattern from the top of the message with grid lines added to make it easier to see each dot in space. Each column of dots and spaces represents a number from 1 to 10. This is the basic computer numbering system that works with ones and zeros, or in this case, with dots and spaces. But this system needs a starting point. That's what this row of dots represents. The ones and zeros up here relate to the dots and spaces here. Notice that there is a dot and two spaces in this first column above the starting dot. This is represented by a one and two zeros up here. Likewise, there is a zero, one, zero here that relate to the space, dot, space here, and so on. To interpret what the ones and zeros mean, we begin with the bottom digit. Zero digits have no value. However, a one digit in this row has a value of one. 
a one digit in the next row up has a value of two, which is twice the value as the lower row. Likewise, a one in this row has a value that is twice that of the next lower row, or four. If there were any ones in this row, they would have a value of eight. In order to determine the decimal number that a column of dots represent, you simply add the values of all of the one digits in that column. For instance, there is only a single one digit in this column, and it has a value of one, so the total number is one. This column also has only a single one digit, but it has a value of two, so the total number is two. In this column, there are two of the one digits. This one has a value of one, and this one has a value of two. So you add the values of one and two together, and you get the total number of three. This column only has a single one digit with a value of four so its number is four. But this column has two of the one digits with values of one and four, so the total number is five. Here we have ones with values of two and four for a total of six. And here we have three ones with the values of one, two, and four for a total of seven. Now for this number, they did something very interesting. Instead of showing a value of eight with a dot in this row, they have a dot at the start of the next column and a corresponding one digit above it. They did that in order to show how dots for very large numbers do not have to be in a single column and that additional dots can be continued in subsequent columns. So the one digit in this column with zeros in the first column indicate a total number of eight. In these two columns, we have a value of eight plus one for a total number of nine. And in these columns, we have a value of eight plus two for a total number of 10. You can now see how the numbers of one through 10 can be represented by dots and spaces. Larger numbers can also be represented in the same way. This dot pattern appears just below the numbering dots. This row of dots represent the starting points for these columns of dots. They indicate the numbers of one, six, seven, eight, and 15. When you look these numbers up in the periodic table of elements, you find that they represent the atomic numbers for hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus, which are the basic elements for life on this planet. These numbers represent formulas for sugars and bases in nucleotides of DNA. And this long series of dots and spaces represents the number of nucleotides in DNA, which is 4,294,966,110. Finally, these curve lines represent the double helix of DNA. So the simple dots and spaces of this portion of the message describe the entire composition of man. This dot pattern is found below the previous portion. A human being is depicted here. These dots represent the number 14, which indicate the height of mankind and this very large number of dots and spaces represents the value of 4,292,583,750, which happens to have been the population of Earth in 1974. 
These dots represent the planets of our solar system around the sun, which is depicted by this large square. Then you have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Notice how the symbol for Earth is higher than the rest to indicate where mankind lives. At the very bottom of the message, you have what looks like a rainbow over the letter M, but actually it is a depiction of the Arecibo telescope which sent the message. In the middle of the M is where the radio energy is bounced off of the dish antenna and then out into space. The dots and spaces at the bottom represent the number 2430, which indicates the size of the telescope. When you flip the dot pattern over, you can see a closer relationship to the telescope, which was similar to this one at your Bolton in England. This is the complete Arecibo message again, and this is a graphic of the crop formation that was discovered 27 years later on August 19, 2001, next to the formation of the face and the Cherbolton telescope. The red dots indicate what was different in the crop formation from the original message. The dots and spaces here are the exact same binary representation of our decimal numbering system as it appeared in the Arecibo message. However, this pattern is different, while these are the same. These curved lines are also the same, but these straight lines are different, and everything else is different. However, it all directly relates to what was sent in the Arecibo message of 1974. Let's take a closer look at how these two messages are different. Although the dots for our numbering system were the same, these patterns just below it and the crop formation varied slightly from the original pattern. They represent the atomic numbers for the building blocks of life as we know it. But this new pattern has an extra column of dots that relate to the atomic number of 14, which is the element silicon. Does this mean that whoever created the crop formation has silicon in the makeup of their DNA? Below the dots that indicate the formula and number of nucleotides in DNA, which are identical in both patterns, we have these strikingly different patterns. Instead of a depiction of a human being, as presented in the Arecibo message, the crop pattern has a different depiction of a humanoid form. This new depiction shows a body with two arms and legs like humans, but the head is much larger. And this pattern here, which represents the height of the body, has a value of 8 instead of 14, that the Arecibo message indicated was the height of man. This would indicate that this other body is a little taller than half our height. And this dot pattern of the crop formation, which represents population, is also different. It indicates a population that is almost six and a half billion larger than our own. Now let's examine these dot patterns here. The dots in the Arecibo message represented the nine planets around the sun. These long lines indicated the relative size of the planets. Notice how this dot, which represents the Earth, is above all of the others in order to indicate where humanity lives. Also notice how Earth's dot is located directly below that of the depiction of man. In the crop formation, there are three dots that are raised above the rest. They refer to the planets of Earth, Mars, and Jupiter. However, it is the dot for Mars that is located directly below the humanoid body. Does this mean that the creators of the crop formation come from Mars? 
If so, why is the dot representing Earth also raised next to that of Mars? In addition to the dots for Earth and Mars, notice how there are four dots that represent Jupiter, which also appear to be raised to the same level. But instead of just representing Jupiter as a straight line, as in the case with Saturn, which is roughly the, about the same size, there are four dots forming a circle. Well, Jupiter is too big with too much gravity to support life. However, there are four moons around Jupiter that are about the same size as our moon. They are known as Eo, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Could these four dots mean that there is life on those moons as well? At the very bottom of both formations, you have these distinctly different dot patterns. This is a depiction of the Arecibo telescope that sent this message with an indicated size of 2,430. And this is a depiction of something else with a size of 6,748. Look closely. Doesn't this formation look like something that you have seen before? Well, it just so happens that one year prior to the discovery of this formation and in the very same wheat field, this crop formation appeared, and they both look surprisingly similar. As previously described, this pattern represents a new form of radiated power using an H2O magnetron to generate temporary particles of magnetic energy. Could this represent a new form of communication that could be used to communicate with whoever created the crop circle formations? Let's review what can be derived from the Chibolton crop formations. If the information provided is accurate, we now know that we are not alone in the universe. There is intelligent life on Mars and on the moons of Jupiter. We know the general form and size of what they look like, the composition of their DNA, and their population. We also know how they communicate, and more importantly, that they want to communicate with us. What this formation does not tell us, however, is why they want to communicate with us or what their intentions may be. However, another crop formation was discovered one year later that could shed some light on these very important questions. Now, initially, I thought that this next formation that I'm about to show you was a hoax because I believe that it was created by someone who simply wanted to make a cartoon image of an extraterrestrial being. Now I understand that this pictogram is a deliberate attempt to show an extraterrestrial being as a living entity with a consciousness. On August 15th of 2002, this elaborate crop formation was discovered at Crabwood Farmhouse in Winchester County, England. It is a frame design that measures 232 feet by 390 feet. This disc is 100 feet in diameter. It appears to be a rendering of an extraterrestrial being holding a disc with three objects that appear to be shaped like UFOs. This is the head with a pointed chin, parted mouth, nose, and large eyes. This is its neck, the front of its torso, and this appears to be its hand holding out the disc. This has a much higher resolution quality than the facial crop formation of one year earlier. That is because horizontal lines of varying widths are used, which is the same way that pictures are displayed in television. The prior facial formation simply used dots of varying sizes in the same manner that pictures are presented in newspapers. This is a close-up picture of the disk. It is comprised of blocks formed by standing crops surrounded by flattened crops. It is a spiral pattern with a sequence of blocks and spaces that start at the center 
and spiral out to the edge of the disk. It was discovered that this sequence was divided into groups of eight equal parts that were separated by triangular arrow-shaped symbols. When these patterns are analyzed, they were found to represent letters and symbols based upon a computer code known as ASCII, which actually spell out an intelligent message. Now, you may ask why the creators of this formation would use this obscure manner to deliver their message, rather than just displaying the letters themselves. Well, it would take a matrix of a minimum of six dots wide by eight dots tall to represent each letter. If each dot were rendered in a crop field as being a block that was ten foot square, it would require a field that was 7,960 feet square in order to display the 152 characters of this message. The pattern in this 100 foot diameter sized disk is simply the most efficient means to deliver the message. Let's take a close look at the exact way in which the message was rendered. It starts in the center. This is a close-up view of that center, and this is the same area with the standing crop patterns highlighted. The dots and spaces here represent the letters of the first word of the message. It all starts with this ever-widening curved line. There is a triangle shape where this line ends to indicate the start of the first group of blocks and spaces. Here is another one which indicates where one group ends and another one begins. Between these two, you have a block here and one here. This is a graphical representation of the same center portion of the disk. If you compare the lengths of the spaces here, here, and here to the width of the blocks, you find that there is one space here, four spaces here, and one space here for a total of eight parts. Each part can be represented as a one or zero to indicate either a block or a space. In this way, you would then have zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero. Those digits are shown in this column here with the first digit on top. The next group can then be represented as a zero, two ones, two zeros, then one zero one, which is listed in the second column, and so forth. You may recall that this is the upper portion of the Arecibo message that represented our decimal numbering system. It represented columns of dots that were only three dots high. However, this same method can be used with columns of even more dots. When applied to these groups of eight parts, we find that the first three rows have the values of one, two, and four, just as in the Arecibo message. Each additional row is then assigned a value that is twice the value of the previous row. This row has the value of 8, which is twice the value of 4 in this row. Likewise, this row has a value of 16, then 32, 64, and 128. In order to determine the total decimal value of each column of digits, you simply add the values of each row wherever there is a 1. In the first column, we have a 1 with a value of 64, and another 1 with a value of 2. When you add